and gentlemen. Good night. I am very delighted to be here tonight to join this team of wonderful men and women and to be surrounded by some of the long-standing stalwarts of the Democratic Labour Party. Uh, as I cast my gaze across the river, yes. I see the likeness of a great man. Yes. A man who is responsible for the hopes and dreams that stay resident in the hearts of all Barbadians. And a man whose dream must never die. And that's why we're here tonight. I must confess I'm not feeling 100%, but I'm going to do my best. There was a time in, 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 this, in this country where when the, the doors of Parliament swung open, you could anticipate the voices of men, great men, like the Red Excellent Terrell Walton Barrow. You could anticipate the, the smooth and pronounced presentations of a man like our own. Branford Mayhew Kitt. Sir Lord Erskine Sandiford, who is here tonight. I see Erskine Simmons here. Warwick Franklin here. Maisie Barker. Well, here. Men and women who made us want to leave our home yes. and to enter the precincts of this great place to hear them talk the business of this country to the people of this country but those days are gone now and we now find ourselves at a state where we have to do something. You know, whether you like Tom Adams or not, and God in heaven knows many of us didn't like him, he too was one of those men that provided the kind of exercise in our parliament that would make young people then, like myself, aspire to become politicians in this country. Those days are now gone. But I'm glad that the Democratic Labour Party is no longer in the wilderness. For we've made our sojourn in the wilderness long enough. And we've cast our gaze on, on, on the, promise, the promised land, you see. And, and we're moving steadily towards that day when our country will be rescued from the Barbados Labour Party. And where we will no longer have to worry about the kind of behavior that we've witnessed. And, and let me take this time to say that I'm reminded of the great words. There's a time and a season for everything under the sun. There's a time to laugh and there's a time to cry. There's a time to sit down in Parliament and there's a time to get up and walk out. There's a time under the sun for everything. I understand that Liz Thompson washed her mouth all over a number of us. She, oh no, she's not Mother Sally for me. She's like a giant rag doll. A giant rag doll. Now you know that I, I'm not really in the business of, of going down certain lines, but I, I'm going to take a minute to say something. Liz Thompson was pronounced dead in this country, you know. Don't forget that. She reemerged with her hair falling out. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. But that's enough for no. Because if Liz Thompson thinks that 
Dennis Law will sit around and allow her to destroy or to disrupt my reputation. I will, I'm ready to fight, you know. I'm ready to fight. All I will say to them is that if they have evidence to verify what they are claiming, come to the not in Parliament, to the public. Present your argument and your evidence. That's all you have to do. But there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. This meeting tonight is not an ordinary meeting. And when our leader said that he was calling the meeting, I want you to know that he had unanimous agreement among the team. Every single man said yes. As a matter of fact, I do not recall in 11 years in this party ever seeing our esteemed leader as hungry as he is. And that's why Oingaka doesn't have much to say. And we will deal with him when the time is right. But there's a time in the season for everything. This battle that we are on, that we are fighting, is, is not simply a battle for seats. This is a battle to rescue the soul of this nation. This is a battle to take back the dignity of Parliament. This is a battle to rescue the trust of our people and to place it back into the hands of those that they choose to govern them. You see, we're now living in a country where, where those who have been selected to govern has lost touch with those who must be governed and where they have lost their way and this country now stands at a crossroad and it is time for change in this country. It is time that we rescue our nation from the hands of the Barbados Labour Party. And I want all of you tonight, wherever you are, in the hearing of our voice, to understand this is not simply about changing a government. This is about saving our country. This is not about simply changing one prime minister for another. This is about taking our country back. That's what this fight is about. It's about saving the soul of this country. It is about reclaiming the dignity of our democracy. And you must understand that never before in the history of this great country has the business of the government been viewed with such suspicion of corruption. Every single thing that they do now a day seem to be reminding people that there's some kind of steel in there. And I'm moved because this country has a long and a rich history and some of the very men and women that I just mentioned are some of the architects that build this country that created the Barbados that we know and I've said before and I'll say again that the Barbados that was promised to us through independence is not the Barbados that we have tonight and we must go after this great country again hand in hands and take our country back once and for all so we, we, we there's a sense of dislocation in Barbados there's a time now where you go to the supermarket and you get in line and, and there are mothers who have to choose between a cartoon of milk and a tin of sardine. There are mothers who, who have to choose between baby formula and, and, and pampers. There are mothers and, and their fathers in this country.